spread. I just gotta get my part of my house. Yeah, exactly. Very tiny. Small bit of Hey, the controller brand very well. Yeah, I wish I could. What's that? Did you soar after that? Me? Yeah. What? Oh, I know. Well, at least there's something to put my elbow on. <laughs> Everyone say hi to Fabulous. She's back. <laughs> Oh, you're saying because 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 you're Because I figured you're going to relax. I'm sorry. Just let me know that you're alive. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Hey, Bill, how you doing? Well, good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to Las Vegas, the fight capital of the world. I'm Brian Custer, the host of Showtime Championship Boxing. This is the final press conference for Boutaille versus James. You know, on Saturday, October 30th, Showtime Championship Boxing is going to kick off three straight weeks of high-stakes world championship fights. Our broadcast begins at 7 o'clock Pacific time here. That is 10 o'clock Eastern. We're going to bring you a triple header of fights. Now, the co-main, it features the unbeaten, welterweight sensation, Jerron Boots Ennis out of Philly, taking on Thomas Delorme. And, of course, the main event, Rodbath Boutaille, unbeaten, taking on Shango. Jamal James, as we look to crown one WBA champion at 147 pounds. And of course, we're going to open the night, though, with lightweights as Matias Romero uh, takes on the exciting, hard punching Michelle Rivera. So it's going to be one heck of a night. Again, three straight weeks of fights because next week we're back here again. Showtime Championship Boxing back here in Las Vegas because we have boxing's pound for pound number one fighter, Canelo Alvarez, the unified champ, taking on the IBF super middleweight champion, Caleb Plant, and the winner becomes the undisputed champion at super middleweight, the first undisputed champion at that weight. And then we follow that up on November 13th, and we head to the Valley of the Sun in Phoenix, Arizona, and it's a homecoming fight for two-time super middleweight champion David Benavidez uh, as he gets to fight in his hometown of Phoenix. Three straight weeks of big fights coming your way on Showtime and, of course, Showtime pay-per-view. But let's get here uh, to Saturday, October 30th, this triple header of fights, uh, important fights for all of these guys. And as soon as I'm done talking, and interviewing these guys allow you, members of the media, to ask your questions as well. Uh, let's start with the opening fight. Michelle Rivera, unbeaten, 21-0, uh, 14 knockouts, taking on Matias Romero, who is 24-1, and, and he has eight knockouts. Michelle, I'll start with you, uh, because you made your Showtime debut uh, just this past summer in July. You get knocked down in the six, and then get up and knock your opponent out in the eight. It was an exciting fight. What are you going to do for an encore for us this coming Saturday? Oh, well, uh, good afternoon. First, I still say like that. You know who was turned him down? Really? It's not down because if the referee say you get knocked down and the internet is like knocked down, okay. No worries, my first knocked down, but I believe I'm going to lose the in this moment, and I, and I know to, uh, how to get the control. I learned this in this fight. Now, uh, I'm so excited, so focused for this fight. Uh, and I, I know that I will, uh, I will be still training. You know, just waiting, working hard. And, and I know that this guy with experience, 24, 24 fights, one loss. Uh, for me, he win this, this law and he have it. But I know that I will take, is, is he is in my way? Okay, and then I will get in this and I will follow to look the big fights. I will be the king in 135. Like it. Matias, uh, last time we had you on Showtime in March, you were facing a big puncher in Isak Cruz. You lost your first professional loss in a close uh, decision. What did you learn from that fight to make sure you don't make that same mistake this Saturday against a hard puncher like Michelle Rivera? Hola, buenas tardes. Eh, Hola, everyone. Bueno, aprendí primero que todo lo que es pelear acá. Bueno, 
Well, first of all, I, I learned that how to be here in uh, the States. Llevo mucho mejor preparado que contra Isaac Cruz, así que yo creo que va a ser una buena pelea y que vamos con todo. This time I'm, I'm way better prepared than the last time. Uh, I learned how to be a hostile ground. I learned a lot, a lot from that. And now this time I'm better prepared. You used movement in your last fight. Do you see yourself engaging more in this fight against Rivera? Eh, sí, yo creo que para esta pelea tuve un plan, pero con un campamento muy corto. Y para esta pelea, bueno, hay diferentes planes y estoy mejor entrenado, así yo creo que va a ser otra cosa esta pelea y va a ser mucho mejor. Sí, eso es corto, pero yo tuve un camp muy corto para la otra. Estaba preparado, me preparé tan bien como pude para eso, por el corto tiempo. Pero para esta one, tuve un camp más camp, mejor uh, tiempo para preparar for this fight, so it's going to be different. Well, you heard him. He said this fight's going to be different. He's had a long time to prepare for you, Michelle. Um, he's going to engage. Will this fight go the distance? In your opinion. Oh, well, first, I remember, thank you all for having me give you time. Thank you, Samsung and Life Train for supporting me. Uh, but well, what they can tell you, he's a guy with experience. I'll tell you, and I'm pretty cool. Uh, I have heavy hands, but uh, I have condition for 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 10, 12 rounds, it's 10 rounds, but I'm ready for 50 rounds if you want fight. And I'm going to do everything for a week, and I'm not going to win you in that short. That is, I see, I know the level of him. Everybody knows this. And everybody will know this Saturday night, is on showtime, that is, uh, is, I will be the, the face of boxing. Everybody can see the <laughs> 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 like it. Of Muhammad Ali. Yeah, I love yeah. it. That's great. Of course, that's going to open the night on Saturday. And then we get to the co-main, and we got a really good fight. Because we got a man who has fought some of the top fighters in the world, uh, taking on another young man who some say is the future of the welterweight division. Let's start with Thomas DeLorme. 25 and 5 and 1. He's got 16 knockouts. Thomas, uh, you fought for the world title a number of times. Uh, I look at your resume, you fought on your resume, I think, five world champions. Now you're taking on a fighter, a young fighter who's not only a unbeaten, has this 17 fight knockout streak, and according to the boxing experts, has never lost a round in his career and hasn't gone past the sixth round. You tell us, will you be the first guy to test Jerron Ennis on Saturday? Yo quiero darle la gracias a toda la prensa que vino hoy aquí a apoyar esta cartelera, a Heyman, a Raya Fulton, a todo mi equipo, a Sala que no está aquí, y I want to thank first everyone, all of you guys, all the press, our Heyman, uh, Salas, and everyone that uh, defended the ball for me to get here, and I'm ready. Eh, respondiendo a tu pregunta, mira, uh, a veces José no se trata de tanta fuerza, sino de técnica y, y, y de quién va a ser más inteligente dentro del ring. Yo he estado dentro del ring con los mejores y yo pienso que yo tengo bastante experiencia para empujar a, a Ennis y es un gran peleador, lo tienen como uno de los mejores y yo siempre estoy listo para pelear con los mejores. Well, to answer your question, not all the time in boxing you need strength to overcome whatever obstacles in front of you and you need experience and you need technique and I, I believe I have that and I think I'm going to come out of that because I have all of that. I have fought with all the best. I spar with all the best. So I'm going to play that in my fight. Drop. He says experience is the best teacher, and he's got it on his side. You tell me what do you have that you can not only beat, but possibly stop Thomas Dorman. He's 26 years old. I want to thank everybody coming out. Uh, thanks for the time. Uh, my team, Cameron's joking, my dad, you know. But uh, 
recent experience, I've been boxing all my life. I've been boxing since I was in the jumper. I couldn't even walk. So I've been a sparring professional, a fighter since I was about 12 years old. I've been doing this all my life. This ain't nothing new to me. And he's gonna see it for uh, Saturday night. You know, don't know why. <laughs> I remember the last time we saw you boots and you were taking on Sergey Lipton, yes. And you were excited for that fight because you said, hey, man, finally, I get me a, a former world champion I can show the world. Um, what do you think you can show the boxing public, you can show the welterweight division uh, Saturday night fighting a fighter of Thomas DeLonge caliber? Uh, just, I'm going to continue to keep doing what I've been doing. And that's when it's dominating fashion and, you know, putting on beautiful performances there. Like, like, like I always say before, you know my stories, I'm in and out like robbery. <laughs> uh, Thomas, you know, when, when I look at uh, your resume, you look, look at, let's say, the last five fights. One in four in those fights, you fought some top comp, uh, competition. Tell us why Saturday will be different. El sábado va a ser diferente porque voy a enfrentar un peleador diferente y estamos bien enfocados, queremos regresar a, a lo más alto del de, de negocio y es ganando de AINES. Bueno, Sarah es un poco diferente, obviamente, porque él es un diferente fighter. Pero vamos a estar entrenando y vamos a estar en la elite y vamos a estar en el mundo de nuevo. ¿Qué piensas de Boots as a fighter. Certainly gotten a lot of hype and deservedly so with the performances that he's put on uh, thus far. What do you think about him as a fighter? Yo pienso que Dennis es un buen peleador. Él tiene buen estilo, está rápido, pero yo pienso que él todavía no, no ha enfrentado a nadie. Él, no, él, él, él siempre ha peleado cerca de su casa y él todavía no ha enfrentado a nada. Peleó con el Pines un 140 y yo pienso que eso no fue una, una verdadera ganada a alguien en la 147, un verdadero 147. I think Woods is a good fighter. Uh, he's looking good, he's coming up good. His best win is against Sergio Lepinets, which is a 140. And he, he looked good on it, but I don't think he has the experience yet to confirm somebody like me. Boots, give you the final word on here. Um, seems to think He's got the experience, and Lipinets was a good win, but smaller guy. Now you're fighting a, a legitimate welterweight, in his opinion. Um, your thoughts, and what can you guarantee that we'll, we'll get on Saturday night? Uh, he keeps saying uh, experience. I got the department boxing on my life. This ain't nothing new to me. That's why it's regular to me. But on Saturday night, you're going to expect fireworks. We you know, put on a beautiful show. You know, uh, looking good and come on victorious and, you know, and knock out fish. Mm. Knock out street continue Saturday? Uh, we're not going to look for it. We're going to let it come, come naturally, but it's going to come. That's the call, man, folks. <laughs> now we get to the main event. Oh, we got a good one. This was important um, because it's the WBA looks to finally crown just one champion. One champion at 147 pounds for the WBA. And you have the unbeaten Rajat Bhutayev taking on Jamal James. Bhutayev, 13 and up. Two of his victories have come by knockout. And uh, Rajat, listen, you're facing a man who's certainly going to have the height advantage over you um, and has not suffered a defeat. If my math is correct, in five years, you tell us why you believe you're the man that can dethrone Jamal James this Saturday. <laughs> Um, I've had a lot of experience in amateurs, I've had a lot of experience in the pros, I believe in myself, I believe in my experience that I've had, 
I believe in my team. Uh, we've had a very good camp. Everything went as planned. And uh, on Saturday, I plan to prove uh, that I'm the, the, the champion in this division. <laughs> Uh, Rajab, let me ask you this. He's got the height advantage, reach advantage. What do you believe will be the difference in this fight? Учитывая, что у него длиннее руки и выше рост, в чем ты думаешь будет твое преимущество, в чем будет разница? У любого бойца может быть удар сильнее меня, руки длиннее меня, скорость выше, больше моей. Но воли победы я уверен, что нет ни одного бойца как у меня. I believe that now, you know, everything that I've been through and, and where we are today, um, every fighter has an advantage. You know, somebody, somebody's quicker, somebody's has more experience, somebody's taller. But I think the, the, at this point, the most important is the will to victory. And I believe in, in my will to victory at this point, and I, I think it's at the highest level, and I believe nothing can stop me now. Jamal, let's come to you now. Again, 27 and 1. Twelve of his victories have come by knockout. Uh, Rajat gave an interview to the boxing scene, and one of the things he talked about was his power and aggression being the key in this fight. Um, in your opinion, what will be the difference in this fight, Jamal? Uh, first, I would like to say good afternoon, everybody. Hey. Thank you all for coming. <laughs> You said, what will be the difference in this fight? Yeah. I mean, uh, you know, we're top level. You know, everybody up here at the stage is top level fighters. We're going to come and give our very best. Uh, when you say the difference, you mean the difference from me to win? Absolutely. Um, the difference that I need to win this fight is to make sure I hit him more than he hits me. <laughs> so that's my main focus, and if possible, I'll try not to get hit at all. Hey. But you know, it is boxing, so we'll see. He's talked a lot about his power and believing that his power will be too much for you. What's your response to that? Uh, if he can hit me. I mean, you know, at this level, everybody hits hard. You know what I mean? I'm not fighting, you know, we're not fighting. Cupcakes no more at this level. Every pony you get in the ring with, with the made ounce gloves on, if they catch you, it's going to hurt. So, you know, make sure you keep your hands up, chin down, and try your best not to get hit. I mean, um, I've been in there with guys who hit extremely hard and have beat them, you know, so it ain't nothing new to me. I think this fight is interesting, Jamal, for the simple fact the welterweight division. You know, we like to call it the glamour division because you have big names at the top of the division and it's a deep division filled with talent. But there seems to be a hierarchy. There seems to be a, a, a hierarchy of, they call the elites, where you have the Errol Spence, the Sean Porters, the Terrence Crawfords, the Danny Garcia's, names like that. And then they say there's another level. and. They may mention a Jamal James and, and, and other fighters, uh, Butaya. This opportunity Saturday seems to be an opportunity for Jamal James to say, listen, I'm at the elite. How do you see this? Uh, exactly how you say it, you know what I mean? We're here in Vegas, headlining on Showtime. Uh, you know, it is time for me to let people know that I've been at this level and should be able to get the opportunities that those guys have been given and have gotten, you know what I mean? I and mean, that's not to take none away from them guys, but like you just said, man, we're, the welterweight division is stacked, you know what I mean? We got a, a, a bunch of great talent, and it's time for some new guys to get their name up there and be able to make these, you know, bigger money fights, bigger name fights. And we'll wrap it up with this. We're trying to crown one champion for the WBA, and there's another guy by your Dennis Fugas. Yeah, let's who, run it back. Who's already said, yeah, I'm the champion. The, the, don't even mention Jamal James. I'm the, the guy. So I guess what's your message to your Dennis Fugas, especially for this fight? Well, first, I'm not going to overlook my opponent over here, first and foremost. So I got to get past this fight first. Mm -hmm. But um, God willing, I am victorious in this fight. Then my message is that we need to run that back. You know what I mean? 
he had a great win over Pacquiao. He's a, he's a great fighter. Uh, when I competed against him, I didn't have a full camp. You know, it was a very short notice fight. Uh, I don't like to talk about that much because I don't like to sound like I'm making excuses. He was a better man that, that night, obviously. But I think when we both have full camps, that it could definitely be a different story. But you know, let me let me get past my guy over here first. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, and I got to ask you this because you know some have written about it. They've said, "Hey, look, Paul James is victorious on Saturday. If Jerron Ennis is victorious on Saturday, why not those two getting it on?" What did Jamal James say about that? Hey, compliments to Jerron Ennis, man. He's been making a great name for himself, and I'm not, and and, and I'm definitely down to give his brother. Uh, opportunity um my thing is like you stated before they have still yet to put me at the top and right now we got two champions at the wba welterweight division which kind of don't make sense to me so my focus is to get past this fight here and then i would like to fight Uga so we can eliminate these two you know what i mean there should be one wba welterweight champion and then you know, when he, I am that one welterweight WBA champion, and cats were making names like Ennis over here or some other guys, uh, I'm, not, I'm not ducking nobody. You know, I'd be down to give these cats opportunity. I uh, obviously talked to my management, Al Heyman. He's been making great opportunities for me. He's been paving the way for me, and as well as a lot of other guys. Um, so whatever they say, I'm pretty much pretty much gonna roll with. But I I definitely see that uh, in the future. Fantastic. I know there are a number of people here in the media that have some questions, so we're going to give you guys the opportunity uh, to ask your question. Just identify yourself and fire away. Uh, Keith Knight from Boxington.com. Uh, Jamal, my question is for you. Obviously, I don't really want to fight Ugas again. What do you make of the WBA's order to kind of have some sort of tournament here, which makes it more complicated for you to get that fight? I'm just happy to have this opportunity to get back in the ring. You know, it's been a while since I've got back in the ring. Um, um, I know Ugas uh, felt indifferent about it. He didn't like it. And he made a good point. You know, he just beat Pacquiao, and uh, they wanted him to fight the, the Lithu Lithuanian kid. Uh, I can't, forgive me, I forget his name. Um, but, you know, uh, he didn't have as much fights. And it was one of those things where it's like, you know, how do, how do these – guys become mandatory challengers or where did they come from? So he was frustrated with that. I can get that to a degree, but uh, I'm down for the tournament. And regardless, if, if there isn't a tournament, and God willing, I come out victorious uh, in my fight with Butev, then I'm still the WBA champion. So it would still make sense that we have to run it back. He's, he's going to be the super champion. And I'm the regular champion. Well, then, if we're going to eliminate two titles, then me and him going to have to run that back. It just makes sense to me. Uh, Danny Alvarez, uh, Jerome, right here in the back. Just want to say, uh, been a professional now five and a half years, a uh, nice size uh, welterweight. How do you feel at that division? I mean, I feel like a lot of people are eyeing you as the next up and coming, right? The next, the next guy up, the next. Uh, you know, potential future world champion. How do you feel at the division, though? Because obviously that has to play, you know, th that comes into play. Can you continue to make 147 for another year, year and a half before that title opportunity comes? Uh, I feel great. Uh, definitely can make uh, 147 as long as I, you know, as long as I win. I'm, I'm on weight right now, so I'm feeling good, feeling strong, ready to rock and roll for Saturday night. So I, I'll be at 147. They start their one of these and then once I get one belt, I'm the rest of them. And I'm going to go ahead and go to 54. Boots. Boots back here. Uh, when we're talking about talent, you know, speed, power, athleticism, do you feel you're the most talented welterweight in the world, if not uh, in the world period, in boxing? Uh, most definitely, I feel like I'm the, the most talented welterweight uh, in the division. Uh, I'm great at everything. I, I can box, I can bang, I can fight softball, I can fight ranking, just whatever you want to do. And a lot of guys don't want to prepare for it. That's why I'm not fighting those top guys because they don't want to prepare for somebody like me. They would rather fight somebody that's right in front of them or, st or stationary or something like that. So that's why I'm getting jumped around right now. But after this fight, you know, after I make a statement on Saturday night, 
I don't care who it is. Uh, it's up, and uh, I'm ready to take over this one three division. And, and Jamal, you, you mentioned, of course, just want to punch the other guy more than he punches me. Sometimes in your fights, your offense has been your best defense. Do you think we see that Saturday night? Get a war because of that. I mean, yeah, I mean, if you hit him, then it's hard for him to hit you. You know what I mean? Uh, <laughs> um, but I'm going to listen to my corner. You know what I mean? I'm going to follow through with the instructions that my corner gives me. I got my father, my brother, and my corner. Uh, I trust them with my life. So if they tell me to go in there and, and be more offensive, then that's what I'm going to be. If they tell me to, you know, box or, or be smooth or, you know, Tell me to go out there and drop my hands down and stick my face out. That's how much I trust them. You know, so uh, that's that's my game plan. <clears throat> Jamal, it's out here fight that news. How you doing, man? What's up? A quick question here for you. Uh, Given the history of what's been going on in your city, and you're representing uh, Minneapolis, Minnesota right now, you are the face of boxing uh, for the whole state and the city, and we kind of know what's been going on with the past. Can you? Describe, does that give you any extra motivation knowing that you are representing an entire state, an entire city at it this gives, time? It gives me extreme motivation, man. If you uh, look at the history of boxing, boxing has been a sport that people can kind of come together, especially during like revolutions or during very hard times. People can come together, they can talk, they can, you know, kind of briefly take their mind off um, serious struggles that they're dealing with and rally behind, you know, whatever, whoever champion that they rally behind. And my city has shown me a lot of love. And I, you know, that, that's what gives me uh, extra motivation. Not only just my city, but my family and my organization, the circle of discipline, you know what I mean? Um, and when you're fighting for something bigger than yourself, it gives you that extra, that extra hunger. You know what I mean? If I was just fighting for myself just because, you know, I wanted the fame and the glory, well, then I'd probably just bow out now. But then I already won the title or got my face on the strip, you know what I mean? But mm -hmm. I'm not fighting for that. I'm fighting to inspire. Uh, Shango Nation is my business, and my whole goal is that, you know, to inspire others, to use their platforms to inspire others, you know what I mean? And, and to help out and to be do more for that aspect work. Beautiful. Shout out to, to what you've done. Hopefully you'll watch the broadcast. Uh, Showtime Championship Boxing did a fantastic feature on Circle of Discipline, his gym, what they do for the community, and his whole heart and what he wants to do and give back to his community. So make sure you watch the broadcast because they do a really good feature on that. I love what you've been doing. Also shout out to uh, Caleb Truex, another brother representing the Twin Cities. Indeed. Thank you. Thank you. That's it? All right. Thank you very much. So, again, folks, it all goes down this Saturday, uh, 7 o'clock uh, Pacific time here in Vegas at 7 o'clock Eastern. Triple header of fights. Uh, also, don't forget, all access, uh, the second uh, episode.